Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're recreating an amazing image that I saw online. I wanted to try and figure out the lighting technique used in the original image, so I recreated it exactly as I saw it. Before we get started, I want to give credit to the original creator of the image. The inspiration for this tutorial comes from an incredible photographer who goes by the name Favor Benjamin Photography. I'll leave a link to their work in the description below, so be sure to check it out. I know some of you may be thinking that recreating an image exactly as you see it is simply copying. But I want to emphasize that this is also a way to learn how to light and develop your own skills and techniques. I remember when I started photography, I was studying images I found in magazines that I saw on billboards and other print media. It's even something that I still do to this day. I'm always talking about enhancing or increasing your visual vocabulary. So by taking the time to study some images that you love and try to recreate them for personal training purposes, you can gain a better understanding of lighting and composition and even how to apply these skills in your own work when the time arises. And once you've learned the basic lighting setup, you can experiment even more by playing with different parameters such as the modifiers, the lighting angles, the power ratios, and so on. This is where you can really start to develop your own style and create unique and compelling images. I also want to ask if you, my friends, will be interested in us turning this into a series. I can even ask you to submit images. We can figure out the lighting together, you know, things like that. But whatever your thoughts is, let me know in the comments down below. Let's dive into the tutorial and take a closer look at the lighting technique used in this image. As you can see, the lighting creates a beautiful sense of depth and contrast, which is really what drew me to this image in the first place. With that said, let's break it down step by step and see how we can recreate or build this effect ourselves. What I want to add is that there is no one right way to create compelling images. The process of learning and experimentation is ongoing and at least for me, will always be exciting. And so I hope you are inspired by this video. Let's just get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm with Docas. Hi Docas. <laughs> okay, so what we are doing today is we are playing with what, like three hard lights, essentially. Let me walk you through what's happening. So this is my main light, right? And this is the Flashpoint 600. And what it's doing is throwing a hard light across the frame this way. And the way I've positioned it is um, we're going to play with like a lot of shadows and highlights in the, in the shots today, right? So that light is going to go across and we're going to cast the shadow from the curtain onto the backdrop. And then when it hits here as well, we will have a lot of shadow on this side of Docas, right? Then my second light is this Flashpoint Explore 400 TTL. I have a seven inch reflector or cone on that aimed into the seating so that we have like a big wash of light softening the shadows that will be created by our main light over there. So that's light number one. This one is light number two. And like I'm saying, the first one is creating a lot of harsh, you know, textures, shadows in the shot. The second one is supposed to diffuse it. And then we have a third one over here that we rigged <laughs> with my deep focus reflector and the reason why we are doing that is because we just want to have like a nice highlight you know into the afro so we have more separation of our subject from the backdrop for the set what we have is really interesting so um, we have this uh, canvas backdrop that we put on the floor we put some boxes and tools underneath so we can get these creases to add texture again and then we also have these creases and headdress so we have textures in there. And then we added this drapery to break that monotony in the backdrop. 
Again, we also crease that and draped in such a way that we also have some folds and textures in there. So that pretty much is the setup. So from the backdrop to the lighting and everything, I'm gonna start taking test shots one after the other, and then you guys will see how the images turn out. Docas, are you ready? <laughs> All right, so let's start shooting. So for this shoot, I'm shooting with my Canon R5 and the Canon RF 51.4. My friend Lee was kind enough to lend me this lens. This is the first time I'm actually shooting with a native lens. I've always been using um, third party Sigma lenses because I'm cheap like that. <laughs> so we'll see how uh, this looks. This is a 1.2 lens, so we will be shooting at 1.2, but trust me, you can get the same results with a 1.4, 1.8 lens, right? Okay, um, on there also we have a moment filter on it and what this job is supposed to do is just bloom the highlights a little bit just you know make the transitions into the mid-tones and shadows a little bit smoother and then just give it like a cinematic feel so that's also going to be another level of interest that we are adding to the shot so i'll start off by capturing um some test shots so you guys will see what each light is doing because sometimes i know that if you're imagining like a three four five light setup it's always exaggerated in your mind, right? But if you know that each light is doing a specific thing, it just makes the process and the approach a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start off with our backlight because again, that is the weakest light. And the reason why I like to start with the weakest light all the time is sometimes you will think that they're not really showing up in your shot and not doing anything. So if you first of all start with that and see what it's doing, then you can build the other ones to match it or overpower it or like basically just add up to the shot. So We'll start off with that one, make sure that we like what it's doing, and then we will start shooting. So I'm gonna take one shot where no flash goes off. And as you can see, we have an underexposed image. We have some house lights in here that is affecting the shots. My camera settings, I'm at one over 200 f1.2 and at ISO 50. And so we, we've killed the lights in a way, but it's still influencing our shots. I can actually kill it completely by going into high speed sync, but that means that I'm also going to be making these lights work a little bit harder. But I mean, a light is light, LED lights in the house are also light. So if you have that, I mean, it's not really going to destroy the shot. Okay, so I'm going to go down a little bit. I like where you're facing. I just want you to bring your right leg a little bit higher into here. Yeah, so we have a bit more and then bend it towards me. Yeah, just like that, perfect. Yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna pick my frame. So that's our first test shots. As you guys can see, we have a beautiful rim light in her hair, a little bit of kiss light on her shoulder, on her upper lip. That looks really amazing. We may have a bit of it falling into the foreground and hitting the top part of her dress. I really like what it's doing. I'm going to turn on my main light now and then we'll see what that also does to the shot. So it's going to be the main light and the back light. I'm gonna take a shot, beautiful. So you can even decide to end here if you want to have more mood in your shot. Trust me, there really isn't a right or wrong approach when you're doing these things. I mean, whatever works for you is fine, but this actually, to be honest, can be a shot. I can even stop here, but I just want to lift the shadows a little bit so it's not too, too dramatic. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just turn on our fill light and I'll take a shot. So this is going to be a combination of all the lights right now. As you can see, it just lift the shadows a tiny, tiny bit. You can decide to now, I could have used a reflector, but to be honest, I wouldn't have had so much control. By using a strobe can allow me to increase the power or decrease it. I have more, you know, control over how I want this light to look, but I'm really happy with how everything looks. And so I'm gonna start taking a few shots of Dockers and that will be it. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that hand, right, is looking too stiff, your left one. So just try and make it, yeah. I think I, yeah, I, I love it that way. Beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. Look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just raise your chin a little bit. Yes, that's it, beautiful. Up to your body. Yes, that's it. One more. 
One last shot. Into the camera. Bring your chin down slightly, yeah. Beautiful. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. Let me just recap everything I we did. So we did a three light setup, play with a lot of harsh light. The first one was to create a lot of drama in the shots. The second one was a fill light. We bounced it into the ceiling so we have like a large spread of light. The third one was more of like a hair light so we add a bit of separation and you know, so we can see our subject from the backdrop. In terms of what was going on in the set, we added some canvas backdrop on the floor, also added creases to create texture we added a fabric in the back, also doing the same thing in her dress as well. We have these creases, these folds, creating texture because we're playing with hard light. Creating texture really, really adds a lot to your shot. I also shot with my R5, the 51.2, and added a cine bloom to it so we have like really nice uh, roll off on the highlights. So we played with all these things and created these beautiful images of Dockers. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll catch you guys in the comments. So leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't ever give up.